So this year in January, we launched our Agni on-prem. We got a lot of requests from our customers who had some uh, concerns about like uh, uh, cloud connectivity or security, or they were running some critical operations, right? So they wanted to have the on-prem solution. So we are proud of uh, announcing this launch. It's uh, right now it's offered as on appliance 32 uh, 32k se sessions capacity. You can deploy in HAGR in uh, any mode. And uh, the good thing is that there's an inside out connection for the Arista SRE. So we can help with the upgrade, update, maintaining, maintenance, and uh, keeping uh, uh, monitoring your health, uh, your uh, appliance status. All the authentication, everything, all the data, it remains on-prem, on the appliances. So Arista SRE team will not have any visibility in that. It's just that for the monitoring purpose, we will have a connection. And if, if God forbid, for any reason, internet goes down, so definitely because it's on-prem. So our, for the critical operations, nothing will be impacted. So what are the difference, right? We already had the traditional NAC and now Agni offers SaaS as well as on-prem. So with the traditional NAC, the problem was like, okay, it was on-prem, but complex and costly. It was also difficult to uh, configure especially those uh, segment policies or authorization policy. And if you, can't be, if you do one thing wrong, then everything is blocked, right? So... Things were so now versus Agni as it says we have been uh, we have more than uh, like in the past uh, almost two years we launched so customer really lo loved the true elastic scale it uses the cloud native architecture and very simple to configure net policies so we took all these similar things in our Agni on prem as you can see and let me just uh, over here. So now with Agni on-prem, you can have the same scale as the traditional NAC, but with 50% less hardware. So if you, earlier you needed probably 10 appliances or something, now you can have much lesser. Same again, just like cloud uh, SaaS, simple NAC policy, upgrade, update, it's provided as service, so you don't have to worry about it. And right now we support up to eight node cluster, <coughs> and it can be deployed, as I mentioned, that. Um, across data center, different uh, geographies. Moving forward now, I wanted to talk about the very key feature of Agni, UPSK. UPSK is basically a unique passphrase per user. Think of it as a, a simple and uh, a smart way to control the network access for devices like BYOD or uh, guest user devices, or even for the dorm residents in the uh, university environment. At core, the UPSK actually, it works in both WPA2 and WPA3 environments, six gigahertz. Mm -hmm. And if I have time, I'll probably run the uh, live demo. Does this support Wi-Fi 7 and MLO and all of those features as well? Uh, we haven't done that tested, but probably. So what we've so, heard from everybody else is that any MPSK, UPSK, any of the SAE multi-keyed solutions break MLO? So the, here, that's the beauty of this solution. Yeah. So it does not. So in uh, UPSK, right, the client registration is automatically, which means that, as I mentioned, that it works on WPA2, WPA3. Mm -hmm. In WPA3, the crack doesn't work. So what we do in this, we made this uh, onboarding process very seamless which means if a user has a UPSK, right, they can be, uh, uh, they can use that UPSK, they can go to the portal, generate the UPSK, register their client, and that's it. Their MAC address will be registered automatically. They don't have to do the manual registration at all. So, so what about, so what about Mac roaming, or I'm sorry, uh, Mac uh, rotation? Rotation, thank you. That's the word. Of, that's the word I was looking for, uh, and and all of so, the other issues that come there. So I can take that question. Um, I, I can take that question. Uh, see, Mac randomization does not matter as long as if your even Mac has rotated right uh, again, um, it will redirect you to the portal, and the can portal will again um, as soon as it 
I'm saying that as soon as the Mac rotates, right, the system understands that and it'll redirect you to the portal and automatically the new Mac will be registered. So uh, we don't okay. depend upon the same Mac. So as soon as the new Mac comes, we add it to the list automatically. Okay, so you see this more as a, uh, as a user interactive solution, not a headless uh, device, IoT-based solution. Correct. Okay. Oh, well, it's more of a use yeah. for WPA3. It is uh, more of a user interactive, but in case of WPA2, it is it works for headless device as well, seamlessly. Yeah, that's right. So that was about the easy onboarding segmentation is also built in. That means all the devices connected within on same uh, WLAN, same VLAN. You can block the communication if they are connected using different UPSK. And not only that. Uh, those isolated devices, because it's very critical that they should have access to the res uh, shared resources like printer, scanner, and dorm environment or a projector, right? So this built-in segmentation provides that as well. And that like kind of saves a big headache that, okay, you don't have to manage multiple VLANs for different type of devices, right? Second thing is, uh, next thing is the security aware. Which means if every any time your key gets compromised, it's okay. You can go to the self-service portal and just change your key. So the devices which were connected using the old key, they will be disconnected, and your new key is the valid one now. Last one is the guest access, and I showed that live demo last time. So we made this, uh, we use this UPS key for the onboarding user, guest user as well. Pearl, what? before you go on, can we mm -hmm. can we understand how this is working since this isn't natively supported by the standards for WPA3 and especially 6 gigahertz? Uh, yes, yes. I actually have a demo. Okay. I wanted to show a live demo, but I do have the recorded one, so I'll just play and I'll show you how onboarding uh, does work. Yeah, I more, more want to understand what's happening on the back end since because in WPA3, it's SAE and not PSK, so the mm -hmm. it, that, that king material can't be hashed and matched backwards. So is it are you guys connecting with WPA2 and then re-upgrading them and, and pushing them over? Uh, no. So when the initially client connects, it will, it will use the on, uh, onboarding or the common PSK. So now AP does not know about that, right? So AP just send the request to our Agni. Agni will know, okay, this, is, this client is new. So that means it has to use the common PSK. So it will send that common PSK to AP. Now they will do the handshake. And uh, uh, the client will be redirected to the portal. When the uh, user is on the self-service portal, it will do the registration. At that time, Agni will automatically register the MAC address. Okay. And that's the way. Okay, okay. I got that now. I missed, missed that earlier. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. So for a guest user, similar thing. That when the now guest user, they don't have to go through the annoying captive portal that you go and uh, enter all information right here. Guest walks in and on a uh, probably self-registration uh, set up on the kiosk, they can enter their email and boom, they get the QR code, scan the QR code, and they also get that QR code in their email. So now you scan the QR code, you are connected with your own UPS gate. So it's more secure than connecting to a open SSID or to a common uh, like WPA21. So let's move forward. So um, for this demo, I had this topology, you see two uh, multiple devices and the different color shows that they are connected on the same WLAN, same VLAN. They'll get the same IP address from the same pool and uh, they are isolated. Okay, this is my, I'll try to do this one. Connect, and I'm using common passphrase. Hope it connects. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. You see here, it's not. It didn't get uh, complete. So I'm redirected to portal. I log in as Barbara. Once I verify who I am, right, and then automatically it tells me that, okay, you can register your client. I follow the instructions, copy your UPSK, continue. And it has uh, like a very few instructions. Basically what happens, some of the OS in all, always depends on the client. The, some of the client, when they uh, cache the information, old PSK, common passphrase, 
and they will keep trying. And what happens, some of the OS will say, hey, you got the wrong PSK, try new one, prompt. But some of them don't prompt. So we always have this instruction, copy, paste, and proceed. And then you can go ahead and uh, forget the network. That is listed over here. Let me go here and say, manage no network. I'll forget. So you're not changing the SSID. No, we are not changing the SSID. That's the beauty. But, it's one but the, single SSID. the end user must go through this forget cycle to to restart the process. Well, they have to change their their key. Yeah. So and they have, have to do that somehow. And they have to have a use the pre-shared key first before they can get to the portal to begin with. Yeah. Yeah. But, but the thing about that is, uh, if you reset, if you forget the network. And rejoin. Now you have a new MAC address. Uh, actually, Depending. no. For the same SSID, most of the time, like you just saw, I forgot the network, and I I pasted the copied UPSK. It uses the same MAC address, but in, in case it is new, that's that's end client. Behavior. It's client that's dependent. dependent. Absolutely, yeah. Client. yeah, yeah I I, I can client, yeah. I can show you a few that won't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now let's see over here. Uh, sessions. Okay. So I have Barbara, which has, if you see, I have uh, multiple users here. I have Barbara, which has two devices, 3164, 3163, and Shear device 3161, and Alex. So they all are in the same VLAN. They all have the, right? Now let, I'll go back to my, uh, where is my Barbara? Okay. Now let's see if Barbara can ping. So Barbara can ping Shear devices. Yes. Can Barbara ping its own devices? Yes. Now, can Barbara ping Alex device? No. So, that's how we see that UPSK solves uh, first of easy onboarding, both in WPA2, WPA3, and also it provides the segmentation while still providing the access to the uh, common uh, shared resources. Now, Obviously, even though they're in the same VLAN, Mm -hmm. It's you're just blocking client to client traffic. Yes. Between the yeah, different users. I just want to come back to a question Jada asked earlier, which was it once you, if you have got Mac randomization, when your Mac address does change, mm -hmm. I, I think the answer was you'd go back to the portal, but you wouldn't, would you? Because you would be using the wrong pre shared key rather than your device. Sorry. Uh... So, so uh, if you've, you've got a pre-shared key stored in your device, which is your new pre-shared key, then your MAC address rotates. Mm -hmm. so you're not going to be able to connect at that point until you put in the initial pre-shared key. It, yeah, you have to go back and use the initial pre-shared key. Which means you have to forget the network. Yeah, yeah. Point just, view, you're not going to know that. Yeah. You're, Every time. Yeah. You're not going to know that your MAC address has changed how you and rotated. Yeah. That's a help desk call every, every time. Yeah. Step one: Turn off Mac randomization. Yeah. So I, I, I can say there are so a lot of organizations that tell that I, tell their users you need to disable that. Yeah. Or push it. With so them. I can answer that question. So either either the solution, Jennifer, um, is to have uh, turn off Mac randomization in this case, or you can the same solution works with if you want a separate SSID, also two SSID solution where one is onboarding and one is. Uh, for connecting, that also works. So eventually, if your client is not connecting, you just switch to the previous one. It redirects, and the job is done. And then Mac register, you can connect back uh, to the actual SSID. So that's how uh, it's. Uh, you, I mean, user need not to copy Mac address and add it into the portal again and again. And we also have a feature that um, will just not allow clients using random Max to join the network. It, it's you, you can turn that on as well if you want to enforce no random Max on your network. 